understanding also the pre-creation context yeah. of creation, mm -hmm. which is a conflict between good and evil, light and darkness. This is the reason why the, when the first thing God creates yeah. is light because darkness was already there. Yeah. And through the attitude of humanity and all other flesh mm. who, was, who were destroying the yeah. work of God, darkness was creeping back yes. over the earth. And God. Hello everyone and welcome to another study with a biblical perspective. As always, I'm here with my colleague Pedro Antonio, so my name is Ruth South, and those who are here for the first time, a very warm welcome to you. And I would like you, if you're enjoying the study, to share, subscribe, and like this study, and give us a thumbs up, because it tells others that you are enjoying it and they will want to come too. And it's an interesting topic we've got today, Pedro, the flood. But before we go into it, could you pray for us, please? All right, let's pray. Our Father in Heaven, we are grateful once more for being able to serve you in this capacity. We pray that you bless us with everything that is necessary to make it a success in your eyes. We pray for a blessing upon ourselves and upon this ministry and upon the people who will be listening. Let your will be done. In Jesus I pray for your glory. Amen. Amen. Pedro. We started with creation, then the fall, then Cain and his legacy, and now we're going to be looking at the flood and we're seeing the degeneration of man from what God pronounced very good to now something so terrible because a flood story is a terrible one of tragedy um, and it's quite sad. But I want, to, I want to ask you a question, Pedro, in relation to what I've just said. Why would a good God destroy all lives with a flood and save only eight people? And I'm quite interested in this because um, according to Genesis 6.13 and Genesis 7, 20 and 24, I want to know why God would do this. Okay, so, so let's, let's read exactly what yeah. you say. So if yeah. we go to Genesis 6, verse 13, okay. and then we go to Genesis 7, verses 20 to 24, so that we can be very clear on what you say, what okay. your question is based on. Yeah, okay, so Genesis 6, 6, 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And then straight to 7, 20, 20 to 24. 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died and every living sub substance was destroyed which was on the face of the ground both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven and they were destroyed from the earth and only Noah remained alive and they that were with him in the ark Okay, so that's what your question is based on. Oh, and the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Okay, so that's what your question yes. is based on. What, why, why would a good God yeah. do this? This is where we need to go back to study one okay. and talk about Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Do you remember Genesis 1.1? 1, 1? I know you know it by heart. What does it say? In the beginning God created the heavens. Can you speak... In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. In the beginning, God the created beginning. the heavens and the earth. Yes. So, we said that this was a statement about who we are dealing with. Yeah. More than a statement about the creation. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with the one who owns mm -hmm. this planet, nice. this universe, nice. which means I can understand your disagreement mm -hmm. with some of the things that he's doing. But if you owned everything, mm -hmm. 
if everything belonged to you, if you were the ultimate power, you would not be answerable to anyone. That's the first thing we need to understand. And that's why I said, mm -hmm. if we understand that statement, the way we're supposed to understand it, we will understand the rest of the Bible. What does that mean? He is a vindictive God who decides at any time to do whatever he wants, be it terrible. No, it doesn't mean no. that. But you first need to acknowledge he has the right to mm -hmm. do what he sees fit yeah. with what belongs to him. To him. Yeah. Now, if in the text that you read, you said that everything that had the breath of life, where did it come from, this breath of life? From God himself. Okay, so he took back what belonged to, to him. him. That may sound harsh, but we need to understand who we are dealing, dealing with. with. Absolutely. Now, why specifically did he do that? You also read it when you read verse 13 of chapter 6. But now I'm going to ask you to read verses 6 and 5 to 7, first of chapter 6. We will find out why okay. exactly. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. There is a stark contrast between the declaration of God when he created the heaven and earth, which means with everything in between from chapter 1 to chapter 2, yeah. and the gladness there was to the point that he Very threw good. a 24 hour party yes. because everything was very good. And now yes. what we see is that he is grieved mm. in his heart. Why is he grieved in his heart? Because the choice of yeah. man, which we saw in Genesis 3, was for death and evil over righteousness and good yes. which God had created and put him in. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. So by the time we reach chapter 6, mm -hmm. God is grieved. That means there is no more joy mm -hmm. in, in the works of his hand, but rather torment. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Absolutely. Grief despair Hurt. almost mm. so we're far from what he initially created mm -hmm. let's remember in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that's his mm -hmm. he is looking at his own work and he can't recognize it mm -hmm. now the text does go on to say corrupt full of violence mm. now if you read for me from verse 11 to 13 and I will get straighter into your question. Okay, the earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Okay, so we hear here, every flesh mm -hmm. was corrupt before God. Mm -hmm. The earth was corrupt before God. Yes. Everything was corrupt before. That's in opposition that's right. to everything was very, very good. good. Mm. So God is looking at somebody else's work mm -hmm. here yes. in what is supposed to be his. Yeah. I don't know if something belongs to you and it is nice, beautiful, good and perfect. Mm -hmm. You would have pleasure in looking at it no, being you completely destroyed, no. disfigured, Dis defaced, and dis no. by somebody else who has vowed yeah. to destroy you mm. and everything you stand for. Yeah. I don't think you will feel okay. Now, there is another element I want to bring into okay. this. The text says, the earth was corrupt. 
he says every flesh mm -hmm. had corrupted themselves therefore God said I will destroy here is the, the light bulb when the text says everything was corrupt the word that he is using there in the Hebrew is shakat mm -hmm. the earth was shakat everybody had shakrat mm. that means corrupt that is, that means ruined mm. but that means also something else which we find in the same verse god said therefore i will destroy what verb is he using therefore i will shakrat mm. do you see the connection yeah so we are looking god is looking at something mm. which is shahat mm. therefore he says i will shahat which means ultimately that god was looking mm. at an earth and at a race of people mm -hmm. and at animals and at everything else that was being destroyed mm -hmm. by the choice that these same people had made therefore he said because these things belong to me and it grieves my heart and it is so much against mm. what existed initially that i cannot recognize myself in it mm. i will grant them what they have been involved in the question Death. of choice yeah. and responsibility which we find from the beginning yeah. so god did not decide to destroy all lives they did mm -hmm. and god granted them their wish mm. are you with me? i am with you and it's so, interesting that you say that because from adam and eve and then you got there you got cain killing abel and the blood is in the ground cursed it's the ground imagine how many more after that people are killing each other the grab the earth is full of violence not yeah and 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 this when when god says i will shahat yeah. it's because they were already shahating yeah and yeah. god will say i will i will allow it right. to go quickly to an end yeah. to stop them from shakrating to, to stop the pain yeah yeah but but there yeah. is another element in this interest the other the other element in this is that not everybody was involved no so that means some people were being taken hostage mm. in that situation mm -hmm. in the the conflict between light and darkness good and evil god by responsibility had to make a choice mm -hmm. in favor of those who were being held mm -hmm. captive the problem yeah. was he didn't find so many he mm -hmm. only find eight yeah. but what it tells me is god is ready to deliver mm -hmm. out of millions mm -hmm. he is ready to deliver whoever yeah. needs deliverance be it eight people mm. are you with me yeah so this god who destroys everything and can be presented as a vindictive god or a dictator or a mad god is actually if you look at the text a god of grace and mercy mm -hmm. yes he is absolutely who will allow people yeah. to go to the end of what they want and yet they he will grant to others who wish the opposite mm. their wishes yeah absolutely. are you are you with me yeah because no, it's interesting that you what you said there because it's like someone that commits a crime they go before the judge the judge pronounce a sentence they don't say to the judge you're being unfair they accept it and go to prison or wherever they're going but the, but but yet with god when he, you, you you've chose to do the wrong and the evil and the wicked and he's giving you a punishment you're blaming him as though he is the one that has chosen for you to sin and that is wicked that, yeah, yeah. And, and understanding that means understanding also the pre-creation context yeah of creation mm -hmm. which is a conflict between good and evil light 
and darkness. This is the reason why the, the first thing God creates yeah. is light because darkness was always there. Yeah. And through the attitude of humanity and all other flesh mm. who, was, who were destroying the yeah. work of God, darkness was creeping back yes. over the earth. And God yeah. could not allow that because still there, there were people who Eight. wanted the light. Yes, yes, you mentioned the hostile taker over of the earth by the enemy. But yet, he tried to take over the whole globe. But, I'm going to ask you another question. Why would God be so particular about the construction of the ark? Okay, so the ark is the means by which he's going to save, save those who don't want yeah. the destruction that man is bringing upon the planet as well as animals. Yeah. And he's going to be very particular. If you can read for me Genesis 6 verses 14 to 16 okay. in order to answer this question. Make the ark of gopher wood, room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window thou shalt make in the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower second and third stories shall that make it now that's not specific then it's very specific why very... why because this is god's strategy mm -hmm. of salvation okay now i'm going right back to genesis 1 1. Mm. who is in charge in this whole business you know it's god in the beginning God yes. created the heavens and the earth. When it comes up to saving, mm -hmm. God is in charge in much the same way when it comes to creating, yeah. he is in charge because what he is saving is his creation. That's right. So he could not have left any human to decide how to do that because he did not ask any human how to do mm. creation in the first place. Are you with me? Mm. We need to know who we are dealing with mm. on this planet. I know it sounds abstract because God is so far from us and we feel so free to do all kinds of things. Mm. But the Bible is there to remind us that there is a God and he is free. Mm -hmm. He is free to do what he wants to do. But there is another lesson to this. Humanity will need salvation all the, the time, way. Yeah, to the end. And ultimately, mm -hmm. from the enemy. And God wants, by giving so many details of the mm -hmm. ark, which is his strategy to mm -hmm. save, mm -hmm. out of the destruction that is happening on this earth at that time, is to let man know yeah. that... He is the one who saves. Yes, it is. And he is the one who decides how salvation works, how salvation yeah. needs to be applied. Mm -hmm. Because he's looking at Christianity down the line, and he's looking at Christianity trying to define their own ways mm -hmm. of salvation, mm -hmm. their own ways of getting to heaven, their own ways mm -hmm. of getting into him, their own ways of... Are you with me? Yeah. He wants them to know that yeah. he is it's, in charge yes. and in details. Yes, and, and, and I love that you said that because when, it, when he told Noah to construct the ark, he knew what the flood would be like. He knew that it was going to be so devastating. He had to say, well, the ark needs to be of this, this, this and this. Otherwise, if you build it, Noah, you will not be saved. So you rightly said salvation is of God and he knows the best way to save us. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So basically, is Genesis 8 one suggesting that God has possibly forgotten about the situation with Noah then? Because he'd made this ark and he's there floating around in the ark and we hear nothing more in there. So, so can you say the question again, please? Yeah. In Genesis 8.1, are you suggesting that God has possibly forgotten about the situation with Noah? 
in the ark. Okay, can you read that for me, please? Genesis 8, 1. Yeah. Has God, is, is this text suggesting that God has possibly yeah. forgotten? Okay, can you read it for me, please? And God remembered Noah, oh, and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters were assayed. So God, and God remembered, remembered. Noah. Yeah. That, that's where your question comes from. Had he forgotten? No. Yeah. It's about the faithfulness of God being highlighted here. Mm. Why the faithfulness of God? I want you to read for me in the time we have left. I want you to read for me Genesis chapter 7 verses 5, 6, 17, 18. Do we we have little and time? Noah did according unto all them that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his wives and his sons wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Okay, which one did you just read? So I'm going to read 17 now. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. 18. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. 23 and 24. 23 and 24. And, and then you will living, end up with 8 1 again. And every living thing and every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah remained, oh, and only Noah remained alive. And they were, and they that were with him in the ark. And the water prevailed upon the earth and 150 days. And God remembered Noah. You can stop here. Mm -hmm. This is what this is about. Okay. When God said something, he will do it. That's all Genesis 8, 1 is saying. Okay. Remember, re, re, um, notice that you started with Genesis 7, verse 5, yes. that says, And Noah did according to everything God told him. Perfect. It is impossible to conceive. Yeah. It is all um, unconceivable that God would have forgotten Noah on okay. on on the water yeah. in the boat. So when the text says, and God remembered Noah, the text is highlighting all the elements you've just read in all those texts, which are, Noah did exactly what God told him to do. Exactly what God said happened for the time it happened. The, the result was exactly the result he wanted. And now he's come to the, to the end of that part of the plan. God remembered to say, mm. look, I'm faithful. Mm. You have been on this water, but it was because this needed to be accomplished. The time now yeah. has come. I will come and do what needs to be done. And, and it's about the faithfulness of God. And anyway, why would God put him in an ark and give all of that and then forget? So logically speaking. Yeah. So there is another reason and that's what yes. we're explaining. Okay, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. So Pedro, I'm really loving this study. But I want to know, what. so what did the flood achieve then, after all of that? Um, if you go to uh, Genesis 8, 20 to 22, okay. and Genesis 9, 1, you will find out that the, 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 the flood achieved a reset. Okay. We're talking a lot about reset. But not the... The flood achieved a reset, but yeah. also set up mm -hmm. a template. Okay. Let's have Read a look those there. texts for me. And please. Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took off every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the sweet savour and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Even though the man <laughs> remains the same because God has said his, the imagination of his heart is evil, but Look. there is a reset yeah. in the mind of God. The last time we read, God was grieved. Mm. God was pained. God was regretting. Yeah. But now what we see is a God who is appeased. A God who's, who feels like he's starting something new. And how does it start? It starts with a reconnection between man and yeah. God. 
God through the sacrifice of Noah. When the text says God smelled a good smell, people may say, well, this, this sounds really mythical, like, you know, in, in, in <laughs> yeah. um, stories of, of the the ancient Near Eastern people mm. where the gods they yeah. like to smell good sacrifice no what the text is saying is there is a reset mm. on the basis of a new connection man. between man and, and God and you can read the, the rest for me yeah um, and I will 9 1 yeah 9 1 and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth right back to the this is definitely right back a to the new Genesis beginning story. this yes, is definitely is. A, a reset yes it is god redefines his relationship mm. with humanity i'm saying humanity because these eight people mm. are the whole of humanity are oh, great great are you with me? Yes. There were millions of people, but the, mm. with the flood, eight are left. So humanity, the entire population of the world yeah. at this point is communing with God. Are you with me? Yes. And yeah. now I also said, God, if you read verses 2 to 4 of chapter 9, we talked about humanity. Okay. 2 to 4. And it said, and the fear of you... And the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and upon all that moveth upon the earth, and all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as a green herb have I given you all things. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat and surely the blood surely your blood of your lives will i require at the hands of every beast will i require it and at the hands of every man at the hand of every man's brother will i require life of man two things here in terms of reset yeah god also redefines the relationship between humanity mm -hmm. and the animal world mm -hmm. unfortunately there is something that is not that good about that relationship but why does god do it remember genesis 1 1 mm -hmm. okay now the, the the second thing is while he gives man the authority to eat every animal he says but you know what there is something special i want you to know mm. i don't want you to eat the blood mm. i want you to let the blood run because although i give you the authority to eat the flesh of the animal i want you to know mm. i am the owner of life mm -hmm. you're not going to yes. own life you're not going to eat life and i'm still in charge genesis 1 1 he redefines his ownership even though the situation has changed mm. for the worse so mm. that man now is eating animals mm. and he is saying also to animals you still answerable yeah, to, to me, me. Mm -hmm. now i did say a template yeah. the template is found in two places the first place is the notion of blood okay when god says i do not allow you later on we find in the bible he says i have given you the blood mm -hmm. for yeah. forgiveness of sin and the second template is found in matthew 24 verses 37 to 42 37 to 42 but as the days of no were so shall the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that no entered the ark into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall the coming of the son of man be then shall the two oh is that right to 42 yes. then shall the two be taken in the field the one shall be taken the other left two women shall be grinding in the mill the other one shall be taken and the other one left Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come in. Jesus reuses the story of the flood 
to explain what the yeah. last chapter of humanity will be like. Mm -hmm. The flood story is a template of the last chapter of the human history on this earth and it's about responsibility and choice. A wonderful study, wonderful. Thank you so much Pedro and viewers. We will see you again next week and I hope that you got a blessing from this study today. The flood. Sad but a salvation is within it. So until the next time, see you again for another study with a biblical perspective. Goodbye.